What's up guys, back with another twin motion tutorial. I'm gonna show you how I rendered this 3D scene using twin motion. Let's get right to the video. Okay, so one of the first things I want to show you is kind of give you a little bit of a tour around my 3D scene. Just to kind of give you an idea of what we're dealing with, um, how I created this scene, what settings I use and uh, stick around towards the end because I'm gonna show you the path tracer how I use that and a lot of helpful tips along the way also I do want you to know that I don't want this to be a, a very extremely long video so I will be putting out other videos with this same 3d scene to kind of kind of break down how I did the landscaping, uh, what assets I use, also uh, decals, how I accomplished that in my 3D scene, and just to kind of help give you that realistic look that you're looking for. And that will be kind of the gist of how we arrived at the settings. All right, so in this tutorial, I'm just gonna show you the settings and then we'll move forward and you'll be able to see how I was able to accomplish uh, the look for this rendering. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is you know, you always create your image. I already have my image created, we call it render three. And I already have, um, and before I go into that, you can kind of zoom in here in the scene itself. This very small size kitchen in here. Uh, this was meant to be just an exterior rendering, but I wanted to show something as you're out on the street looking in, in this house where you see um, a small kitchen. Well, it's not that small, but kind of show you a nice modern looking kitchen. Um, and as you can see here, I do have an area light. so that kind of shows you the settings that I have at 150 intensity and the color temperature at 4800 and I do enable the shadow all right so I'm going to click on my image here all right guys don't forget to smash that like button for me uh, hit the subscribe bell and um, if you have any questions uh, don't be afraid to leave a question down in the description box and I'll do my best to answer any questions that you have. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is let's go to our environment tab and just kind of look through our settings and kind of see, okay, what look are we looking for? And right now we can go ahead and do something a little different. I'm gonna hit render and you're gonna see uh, the lighting blown out, the quality is very low. And normally what I like to do is I will probably go ahead and set my samples per pixel at a higher level and we'll make adjustments um, as we go through. So let's go back to the environment tab and my sun intensity, as you can see, is blowing out the image. So it's very, very intense. So let's bring that down. I'm actually gonna make it zero. And as you can see, we can see our image very good. You can see that uh, area of light that's doing this thing that's bringing light um, looking from the outside in all right so let's go ahead and do a little bit more adjustments to our settings just to see if we can get some good results all right so we're gonna leave these guys the same let's go to details all right so in our HDR environment we're gonna leave it enabled but we're not gonna do sky dome we're gonna do a backdrop HDR out okay so now that I clicked on the backdrop as you can see my scene went dark and this all could be caused by the intensity of the HDR of the backdrop and the rotation of it and our HDRI itself, which right now is on the default as far as approaching storm. So we're gonna change this now. All right, 
So I'm gonna change the intensity to one. All right. Right now, rotation's at 90. We may change that a little later. All right, so for this HDRI, I did not use a outdoor HDRI. Um, my sky is very clear. And what I use, I actually use um, one of the studio HDRIs. So the studio HDRI that I used was Studio 11. So we're just gonna take that and drag and drop into our scene. And as you can see, our, our, our scene looks very clear. And this is the look that I was really looking for. Um, let's make a little bit of an adjustment to our HDRI. Okay, I'm gonna do 200. So you can go to details and leave all that looks fine. Okay. Now let's go to our camera. Let's make, let's kind of um, make some adjustments to our exposure. So right now we have auto exposure checked on. You can check it off and check it on. Kind of see how um, it kind of brings in our shadows a lot better when you have the auto exposure on. But we're still gonna make some adjustments here. And for my exposure, I think I'm going to I'm gonna keep it at one. My white balance is at 1600. All right, so we'll, we'll keep it, we'll just leave the white balance and exposure here. It actually looks pretty good. So let's play around. My highlights is at one. We can boost up our shadows to 50. All right, so I like the focal length of our view right now is at 30. So you can make that adjustment how far you want or how close up you want it. I wanted to get a nice close up view just because I think that it, it just looked appropriate for uh, the scene itself. And I think it captured a lot of the true essence of the design itself. And, I, I like this uh, how close it is so this is a good view so we'll keep it at 30 and go to detail so let's mess around a little bit of our vignetting I'll make adjustments to our sharpness 50% of sharpness is it was just way too much. 15%, um, you want to be in a range from, in my opinion, uh, anywhere 15, uh, 10 to 15%. If you go any higher, maybe 20, but it just all depends on your scene itself. You don't want to add too much sharpness because then the image starts to take away from its natural look. So we're gonna keep it at 15 here. We're gonna click on parallelism as well. Okay, go to render. So now I'm gonna boost up my rendering to 2048. And we're gonna make our max mouse to 15. And we're gonna leave our denoiser on and our emissive materials on as well. And you know, the, the emissive materials, it pretty much influences the bouncing light in our scene. So that's important. So I, I, I leave that check and it just all depends on uh, the look that you're trying to uh, get with your scene when you're rendering. So go to Fireflies and I'm going to crank that all the way up. And that just, the fireflies just controls the visibility of the exposure of the firefly artifacts. So that looks good. We go to our FX and here we're gonna change some of our contrast. Right now it's at 40 or 50%. We're gonna change that to 60%. So you notice when I change the contrast, I mean, you when I change it, when I 
brought it up to 60%, you saw a big difference, uh, kind of a huge jump between the coloration of the landscape and um, the darkness of some of the shadows, which actually brought out the image very well, in my opinion. All right, so now that we have a high contrast, let's bring down our saturation um, just a little bit. Let's make it 45. All right, so here we have a color gradient. I did add a color gradient onto this image. Um, I think it looks good without a color gradient, but I was working on experimenting, just kind of trying to get uh, a different look. And as you notice, when it comes to rendering, it takes some time to kind of um, just go through these settings and really try to figure out what works and understanding uh, the kind of look that you want your rendering to have and uh, bringing some realism to your rendering as well. So I use uh, Fuji. I'm just gonna scroll down. And as you can see, you can use Fall. Uh, but I use uh, Fuji. So I, I, I really like the results that I got with this one. I didn't add a filter to this one. Um, you can choose different different um, filters for this scene that Twin Motion has available, which is pretty cool. And again, this, it all depends on um, the look and what you're trying to create. All right, so let's go to image. I'm gonna make my image a 4K and details, and I'll hit tile render. All right, guys, don't forget to smash that like button for me. Hit that notification bell and um, we'll be back with another one.